Water is vital for human survival, health and dignity. It is a fundamental resource for development. While essential for our daily livelihood, health and hygiene, water is also central to food production. Be it small-scale subsistence or large-scale irrigated commercial farming. From supplying the basic needs to highly industrialized productions, water catalyzes and supports development. The world's freshwater resources are under increasing pressure. Population growth and climate change create problems for the supply of good quality water. Often, water is not at the right place at the right time. Flooding can have devastating effects for people in affected areas, as can droughts, creating problems for food production with hunger as a consequence. To manage this challenge, the concept of integrated water resources management is gaining recognition globally. IWRM is a process whereby many different water sources and water uses are considered together in a holistic manner. In this process, Planners and users come together across many sectors to manage water in a sustainable way to the benefit of everyone, including the environment. At the heart of IWRM are a country's social and economic goals, as well as the achievement of sustainable development. The SADAC uh, water sector has adopted the principles of IWRM from as long time ago as during the beginning of the water sector. We have touched, attached the development component because we want to make sure that it's understood that it's not just the management but also the development that we need to emphasize. World Summit on Sustainable Development of 2002. During that summit, one of the key outcomes was that the countries should develop uh, integrated water resources management and water efficiency plans. The SADC Regional Water Policy consolidated the issue of integrated water resources management. And from there, each country was mandated to develop integrated water resources management. And for us in Malawi, we were very keen on this particular process and took on this particular subject and made sure that we uh, develop our demonstration, by, by demonstration project right here in Zimpozi. To manage water more effectively, a wide range of stakeholders, community groups, economical sectors, non-governmental organizations and private enterprises need to be involved. Water resources also play a crucial role in terms of our respective uh, uh, developments and should be managed therefore in a very participatory approach where all stakeholders subsequently participate at all levels through or from design of initiatives all the way up to implementation stakeholders at all levels should participate. Management starts at the river basin level where countries form river basin organizations that are sometimes transboundary. These organizations mandate is to take the big picture perspective and be the leading voice on basin-wide water management issues. This means keeping all stakeholders and decision makers from all sectors fully informed and involved. At the local level within the river basins, it is local authorities that are responsible for linking water management and water services delivery and to involve the communities and other water users in the processes. At the local level, IWRM means integrating local development plans from different sectors and include all water uses in a development process. In practice, this implies combining people's need for domestic water and for productive water. That is combining water needs for health and hygiene with water needs for food production, livelihood and income generation. We are happy that uh, this project at Zimposi, which is falling under integrated water resource management, is here in Chikwawa. Because in our development plan, we have a number of issues that we have put that we need to address. 
And one of the issues is you are talking of food insecurity, also uh, talking issues of uh, afforestation, also talking of issue of low income levels, and also talking of uh, a number of issues that we see that the, the project is addressing. SADC has, with the support of the Danish government, implemented IWRM demonstration projects in Mozambique, Malawi, Namibia, Zambia, and Swaziland. The projects have people's livelihood as main focus and have developed a process whereby communities have been in the forefront of the project development and implementation. In Namibia, an inclusive river basin management committee with representatives from eight different sectors, including local communities, was set up to drive the process of managing water in their river basin. The Basin Management Committee, together with the National Department of Water, is the custodian of the water in the basin and sets strategies and priorities when it comes to water resources. In Namibia, we are also trying to revise our policies and our reg legislation to be in line with the whole IWRM concept and approach. As such, um, we are advocating the involvement of stakeholders with regard to water resources management in the country. And we are doing this uh, by establishing basin management committees. And I think with this uh, project, with, the, with its pilot, it's mainly to involve communities in, in being at the center of their water resources management. They understand what it's all about. They understand the interest they have with regard to water resources management. As such, they can also advise the minister, for example, like what is happening at, at their level when, with regard to water resources management. The committee supports the community in taking ownership of the water management process and determine what their needs are. Women from Hakahana, the Omaruru informal settlement suburb, were supported in establishing a small vegetable garden using groundwater pumped by a solar-powered pump. <laughs> Communities are selected according to agreed transparent criteria. District level structures drive this process after careful considerations of district development plans, communities' needs, available resources, and the community's own contribution. In Mozambique, the Ndonga community in Guja was selected for project implementation due to the potential of fulfilling the needs of the community within the project framework and limitations. Located north of the Limpopo River, the area houses some of the poorest communities in Mozambique and mainly depends on rain-fed agriculture and livestock rearing. The project's aim was to address water-related problems of domestic water supply, sanitation, food production, as well as cattle watering. The support agency works closely with the community to ensure a clear understanding of the project and to avoid unrealistic expectations and misperceptions. E esse trabalho que nós estamos a fazer com a comunidade, primeiro educamos para usar os seus recursos para o seu benefício. Educamos ou trabalhamos com as comunidades para saberem como valorizar todo o apoio que recebem. Uh, Ndonga situa-se numa zona que passa um, um rio, o rio Limpopo. E, mas, em contrapartida, tem problemas de falta de comida. O apoio que tem que ser dado não é um apoio de vocês cruzarem as mãos. Temos que trabalhar em conjunto. 
an indigenous plant. A key element in local level water resources management is that local stakeholders come together to formulate the common vision for how water shall be supplied and managed in the local area. The local authorities support and capacitate the communities so that based on actual demand assessment and available water resources, the communities must decide on which water use shall be given priority. I, I think the, 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 the most important uh, aspect of, of uh, uh, the visioning workshop was to identify the, the needs of the community. And these needs were identified by the community members themselves. And these needs created the beginning of what you would call uh, the process of uh, trying to move from where they were to where they would like to go. Meaning that uh, these needs create the first point, the first and starting point for development of the area's resources. Uh, in terms of uh, agriculture and uh, other, uh, and the water resources, the enthusiasm that it creates, the anxiety that it creates that I should be there, really does instill some sense of ownership in the, in the community. In this case, we had uh, communities from Chief Mungaila, communities from uh, Chief Mukovela, put in groups, you know, and those groups, you know, each group came up with, a, with what we call the resource map, where. For instance, where we are standing, this is Iriza. Uh, the community from Iriza in particular, you know, came up with a resource map indicating all the water resources around, vis-a-vis -vis dambos, wells, uh, existing boreholes, their uses, status, technology in place, even the, the management put in place. I think that was the whole SNC in our situation. Special care is taken to ensure that the opinions and needs of usually marginalized groups like women and the poor are taken into account. The time we used to use the canes and those chova pumps, we didn't produce more produces. Now that they empowered with that new system they've brought it to us, giving us these new engines and so forth, women have got money in their homes. Women are able to educate their children. In Zambia, the Kafua Basin Demonstration Project has gone a long way in demonstrating the practicality of an integrated approach to water resources management. Domestic, financial and ecological benefits all follow the rationale that wise water resources utilization and management can improve food security, eradicate poverty and create economic empowerment for the rural communities. We have benefited from this sadic project because of the pumps and the wells which are digging, everything, and we are working the job faster than before we were using the buckets. And uh, we bought the uh, very good assets in our homes, like before, we were just praying in, doing what. Now, this is, I think we are very serious with this project, and people have benefited a lot. Communities are encouraged to take ownership of the project infrastructure through their continuous participation and to show their commitment by contributing directly to the investment, either in cash or in kind, through labor or material. Implementation of water projects not only involves construction of infrastructure with the appropriate technical support from local authorities and other support agents, but also capacity building of communities to enable them to use and manage the infrastructure efficiently and sustainably. Uh, Plasi kututa miyala yota ndizila kumadamu, kututa njeruwa, zonse antuwa mizi amatandizila. The Zimputsi IWRM project in the lower Shiri Valley, Malawi, 
today benefits at least 100 households doing irrigation farming. A further 7,000 people in the Dzimputsi area under Chikwakwa district have been positively affected by the project intervention. The project saw the construction of two small dams to give the community access to a more reliable water source for irrigation even in the dry season. There was a further construction of irrigation canals in a designated 10 hectare area. Here, a variety of crops have been grown for both domestic consumption and commercial use. The construction and stocking of fish ponds means that the community can harvest and sell the fish. It's no longer just food on the plate, it's also money in the bank. Essentially, it is a project whereby we have harnessed water which must be used or is being used as a catalyst for social and economic development for the Zimbutsi people. Because we have seen the benefits of harnessing water, using water as a catalyst to realize social and economic benefits for the local communities. <laughs> Nyemba azizi matitandiza kumbali ya ndiyo. Tikatero, ticho tazimene zichatika zina, zala, tukukoro lande, chima angajimene ta sunga, ndi china ajima kanga, ndi china ajii, chitibe nshito, nshito aje ndukunguli tsaopeza ndrama, kukali pidira, ana, kusukuru. Chitu kukujimene jimonga efe alimi, tikumva muntima mkukoma kwa mbili. Chifuka malomoti tirowedwe njala, njala siku loo wa yae. Ndiye ngati mtu alibe njala, ama kala mtu oko ndo ndo sangalala. Zoso wazaje zonse, ama takupeza, chifuwa joti alibe njala. The community has planted the fish into the same dam, which, which was not there before the project, that was done after the project. So, meaning that now even the... Uh, the health of the people is, has improved because one, they have a, a balanced diet through the fish which they get from the dam and uh, definitely that uh, everyone is uh, given a chance of uh, eating fish. Mwabana <laughs> Both during and after implementing a water project, it is important to continually track and reflect on the process of planning, implementation and operation of the water systems, including the management infrastructure. Monitoring in this way provides valuable information and input to the process and indicates areas in need of adjustment. Communities should themselves be involved and capacitated to identify issues that must be attended to and if support is needed, brought to the attention of local authorities. The importance of monitoring as far as I'm concerned is to ensure the continuity of the project and the sustainability. And from the lesson learned from the project, implementation you can use it in other project sites because there are so many lessons that you learn as you go along doing the project but the monitoring is the key key very key um, component of the project local level IWRM is not a once-off intervention 
the communities that have been uplifted through interventions in the form of infrastructure and capacity building need continuous support from the appropriate local authorities. It is an important part of the project intervention to develop an exit strategy that not only hands over the responsibility for operation and maintenance to the communities, but also defines how local authorities, through monitoring, will ensure that necessary support will continue to be available to the communities. Support will be needed for quite some time before it can sustainably be phased out. The way the project is run is that uh, there is uh, the project committee that is there which is being uh, uh, organized by the chairman and the committee. And the, as, a, as a district assembly, we have, uh, at a district level, we have what is called the, the Area Development Committee and the uh, Village Development Committees. Now, the Village Development Committee, which is falling under Group Village Headman Joseph, who is uh, in that particular area, has put in place measures to make sure that he's in touch with the village headman. So you see that the village headman and the group village man, I know all the people out there, they're aware of the project, they know it, they understand what is going out there. So these people, the leaders, the local leaders, will be able to advise, to, adv uh, to assist if there are problems. So it, that the structures that are put at the district, that will assist to make sure that the, there'll be no problems at the project site. If there are problems, these local leaders and the structure that are there, I think we'll see to it that problems are sorted out and things are smooth. Uh, this project uh, support phases out, it will be the district council, which will actually take up the role of monitoring, supervising, sensitizing communities, and in fact even implementing other like projects in other communities, yeah. During the course of the SADC Regional Water Sector Program, a number of experiences sharing events were held for the purpose of transferring knowledge between the IWRM demonstration projects. These events were attended by stakeholders from the different demonstration project countries. The participants included country representatives from both national and local government, supporting agents as well as community representatives who had been actively involved in the projects from the onset. These events created a learning platform for discussing processes, challenges, lessons and solutions. Knowledge gained from implementing the IWRM projects and shared during these events was captured in country reports and informed a guideline on community-driven water resource management. Today, with the support from local authorities, RBOs and other partners, Communities in Namwala and Chibombo districts in Zambia, Chikwakwa district in Malawi, Ndonga village in Mozambique, Maplotini community in Swaziland, and those in the Omaruru basin in Namibia have improved their livelihood. By using IWRM principles, these communities have stretched their water resources beyond just domestic use. They now know that if well managed, water can benefit everyone in their village and can improve their lives. In Maplotini, sanitation and portable water has been provided for 135 homesteads. Furthermore, a nursery and vegetables have been planted for the homesteads, yielding income for further development. People who used to walk long distances to fetch water for domestic use are now able to access water nearby and for multiple uses. In Katuba, Zambia, in some areas, an average of eight hours a day were spent by women fetching water. Because of the shortened distances, women are now able to spend the time saved for other productive uses to help further improve their livelihoods. Today, where farming was once restricted to the wet season only, off-season farming activities are now taking place, resulting in increased productivity for enhanced food security as well as improved income. Farmers do not have to wait for the traditional harvesting season before selling their produce. Profit is now also being realized in the off-season. 
For most families, the markets are no longer a place to spend scarce money on food. They now present a welcome opportunity to create wealth selling produce. With all stakeholders working together to manage water resources, empowerment and improved livelihoods for local and previously marginalized communities within SADC is no longer a dream beyond reach, but a reality within grasp. A sure indication that when it comes to achieving Millennium Development Goals, every drop counts.